let us pray. Almighty God, the creator and ruler of heaven and earth, we beseech thee to inspire and guide all our actions so that we may always walk in the path of justice, love, and charity to one another. Help us with thy grace to do only those things that will promote the unity, peace, happiness, and prosperity of Nigeria in general and Lagos State in particular. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. You are all welcome to today's sitting. And you are also welcome back from the recess. I hope you all enjoy your yeah, good to know. Let us quickly go through the fourth sum proceedings of Friday, 5th January 2024. Page 119, I have examined the foots and proceedings of Friday, 5th January 2024, and approval is here granted. Any message from the governor? Mr. Speaker, sir, good afternoon, sir. Distinguished honorable members, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. There is no message from the governor, sir. Any other announcements? None, sir. Petitions? There is none, sir. Matter of urgent public importance. Yeah, I think we have a lot on the matter of urgent public importance. Even some have passed while we we're on research, but. Um, there are three issues that has to do with all of us and the nation and our state as a whole. To start with the sad news of the passing of um, our, I don't even know how to refer to him, our friends, our brother whom we cannot deny the fact that we, some of us, let me just say some of us, had very cordial, you know, relationship with. And I'm referring to the demise of the Abad Wigwe, which happened the last weekend. You know, it was, um, it was shocking. 
it was disturbing and um, it was unexpected, totally unexpected. No one would have thought that at this crucial time of our nation, with the challenges facing our economy, someone who has struggled to establish himself with all one can think of in terms of professionalism when it comes to banking industry and so many other things that he has done in touching human's life. And from the comments we have read, we have heard from people, you know, concerning his contributions, his activities within banking industry, in his personal life, and in his relationship with friends and colleagues. For me, it was, it was totally sad, you know, losing someone like him at this moment. There's no doubt that he was, he was a philanthropy when he was around. At least we know about the marathon, which was just two plays over the weekend, which his company has been responsible for, for many years back. And uh, our chairman as committee on sports was even uh, in attendance at the last one. I was as well invited. And so many other things that he has done. My late last encounter with him was on my way from Abuja to Lagos. You know, I would say I was lucky to share his um, PJ with him. So we came together from Abuja to Lagos with him in his aircraft. So within the one hour flight, we had a lot of discussions and engaging him one-on-one -on -one will give you opportunity to know how intelligent he was and how exposed he was, how fast he was in every, you know, sector, in every sector. We talk about so many things, his idea about the economy, his idea about politics, even beyond the shore of our nation. So as I started, you know, losing him now is totally unfortunate and shocking and totally unexpected. But all we have to do is to mourn. We have no control over it. And we just have to accept it as, um, as what fate has brought to us and to within our powers to continue to pray for the rest of his family. He did not die alone. The wife was with him, and his son was also with him, and some friends as well. But today, they are no more. So the lesson from this is that we all should be preparing for it at every point in time, even though we pray always that we don't want to die now, we don't want to die tomorrow, we don't want to die next tomorrow. I'm sure nobody wants to die. Even though you have 100 years to say, you still don't want to die. But none of us can say when it will happen. So if you don't have control over it, the only thing, the only power we have is to make sure that the number of days we have left we utilize it in such manner that people will remember us and recognize our deed. So at every point in time, let us put our best, the best of us in our relationship with others, with our family, with, I mean, with others, with our family, with our friends, and contribute our best you know, 
to our society, our community, our state, and our nation. So that will be what people will remember after us. So about Uigwe has gone. We'll continue to pray for his family. I'll continue to pray to Almighty God to grant him rest with the rest of his family and friends that were involved in the in the accident. So on this note, I don't know if I have one or two who wants to comment on it before we rise in a minute. In this, I'm not. Yeah, Honorable Desmond. Good afternoon, my right honorable speaker. Good afternoon, honorable colleagues. Mr. Speaker, sir, you have rightly said um, truly to the words of, um, spoken true to the words concerning um, Mr. Herbert Wigwe. Um, I've also had the opportunity of knowing him over the years, and I've seen him as someone who, though very wealthy, brings himself at every level to understanding where people come from and what they do. You are very right to have said, sir, that he has contributed so much uh, to humanity. He has also been a friend of this state for many years. One thing very particular I know about him is his family-oriented nature and his complete despise for family domestic violence. And that was something he, was, he, he spoke strongly about and against. Um, he will be sorely missed, and you are very right again, Mr. Speaker, to have said that at this critical time in our nation's development, a personality like him, who has shown a lot of exemplary nature to people and to humanity, shouldn't have gone at this time. But who are we to question God? To all, we will all return. To God, we will all return. And we ask that the family, um, we, we express our condolences to the family and ask that God will give them the fortitude to bear the loss. Herbert will be sorely missed in Lagos State, in Nigeria, in Africa. And as, a, as an entrepreneur, he built Access Bank from nothing to what it is today. And um, he's worthy of emulation. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak and eulogize him, sir. Thank Honorable you. Tom. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Well, I rise with grief and condolence on the demise of Abad Wigwe and the wife, Doreen, and their first son. Well, someone I know closely, and especially the wife. She's a, a shareholder in Cranbrook. And this company have played a major role in Lagos State, especially most of the ISPO, the bankroll, the Krembo, whom, whom we assume are doing wonderfully in Lagos State. The family are so gentle, easy going, and highly unassuming. But, get, but where, what do we do? When God says he has come, nobody can challenge him. We feel for them. We feel for us. They have gone. We are left behind. So it's a pointer that we should all try and do our best, like the Riley said, sir, that one day, we go. And what will people say about us? So it's a pointer for all of us to watch. May the soul of Abba Gwigwe, the Doreen, and the son rest in peace. And may Allah grant the family, friends, and every one of us the fortitude to bear the grace lost. Adieu. Rest in peace, Abba Gwigwe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Good afternoon. Mr. Speaker, and this one. Colleagues, I also rise to join my voice to that of the right honorable speaker and the whole house to commiserate with the families of Dr. Robert Wigwe and all the, the people that were lost on that ill fated flight. It is on record that the former CEO of Access Holding has contributed so much to sports development and also. To social development of this country. His contribution to education cannot be overemphasized also. And um, 
it was interesting when I was reading the news that uh, before traveling, he met the MD of FAN and the Minister of Aviation and was talking about committing his wealth and resources to the betterment of humanity. He never knew he was going to live early. Uh, in addition to the lessons Mr. Africa was telling us, it's a lesson for us remaining that whatever we can do for humanity, it's time to do it is now. Because nobody knows when he or she will live. I want to thank you for this opportunity and I want to say may you so rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Sahil. Good afternoon, right, Honorable Speaker. I write this afternoon to join you and my distinguished colleagues, you know, to elogize the, the late uh, Abat Igwe, the financial experts, uh, the board or the members of board of governing council of Shatter Institute of Banking, uh, a fellow of Shatter Institute of Accounting, a graduate of Insuka, and a fellow of Harvard University, a man of many parts, a lover of sports and uh, a professional man to the core, and a man who has proven that Africans, Nigerians, blacks in general, could start from nothing and raise a conglomerate of banking in the committee of the world. We salute him as someone who has practicalized and demonstrated honesty and loyalty to the financial industry and to Lagos State as a whole. We miss a dear partner in progress in times of support, in times of support, in times of investment. We want to commensurate and they say, may God Almighty grant him and his family uh, paradise. Thank you, Rajan right, Speaker. Well, well, before I just want to appeal, maybe that may be too early, but I know we won't come back to this again. Um, having an opportunity to address this matter is also to appeal to his um, colleagues in the um, Access Bank to try as much as possible to sustain his legacies because he has many, particularly the sport aspect of it, the annual marathon, uh, which just took place a few days ago. Um, Realizing the fact that it has become there of everybody in Nigeria, even beyond the shore of Nigeria. We have people from other African countries participating as well. And uh, it has become an international um, marathon. So we appeal to them to sustain this yes, um, uh, philanthropic gesture of ease so that people will continue to remember him along that line when it comes to sport, as well as this new university, because um, the Wigwe University, which he was looking forward to, to commence, you know, um, academic uh, activities, but unfortunately, he's not going to witness it, so they can sustain this. And I'm sure such uh, legacy is for the benefit of humanity, because those who we have opportunity to study in that school, and, we, and according to him, it will save us a lot of money. You know, I mean, particularly this time that we have issues with exchange rate, the forest, you know, the um, what is it called, education tourism. That's why we said our people, our children, our world abroad. Probably it will have served as an opportunity to reduce the pressure on Naira so that Naira can spring up. So we hope his colleagues will be able to sustain all this for the benefit of uh, humanity. As I said, may we rise to observe one minute in his honor and the others that were involved in the ghastly short aspects. <clears throat> May their souls rest in perfect peace. In addition to that, Mr. Clark, we will do a letter of condolence to his family and to his organization, the Access Holdings, at the appropriate time.
Now, the second leg has to do with that. Probably I should allow the chairman as committee of sports to do that. We just concluded yesterday the, uh, what, what do we call it? Uh, calf. Uh, half corn, yeah, half corn. We are no more calf, but the calf is still calf. That's our own team. For me, they did well, you know, considering the number of countries that took part in the exercise and uh, were able, you know, to stand um, to the last leg of fees that we took part in the final uh, match against the host nation. For me, the crowd speaks volume. So it was kind of challenging for those who were on the field playing for Nigeria. You know, when you have to confront such, you know, uh, opposing gestures from up, uh, supporters of opponents' team, you will understand what it means. And for us to have put everything into it, I mean, in fact, getting the first goal before we were, you know, outplayed by the host nation. Uh, we have done well. Well, at least we are not coming home with nothing. We have something to show for it. Uh, the, the champion, the current champion, left at the second round, if I'm right. Mar is it Morocco? Huh? Round of 16, so second round. So if... we took part in the final of the event, that means we have really done well. So we must commend our players, all of them, and the coach and his team, and then we, should condemn, we must commend them for the good job they have done. And this is to encourage them, looking forward to 2020, 2025. So it's good for us to commend them. So that will give them hope that in the coming tournaments in Morocco, the next tournament is taking place in Morocco, so that we can, if we are second today, definitely it has positioned us to become first in the next tournament. But it is for us to advise those in charge to do more, to put more efforts, and not to wait till where the tournament is around the corner before we start preparations. We should start now immediately. And we should try to look inward also so that we can develop our local football, you know, by selecting some of our local players also to, you know, take part in such, um, in such, in such event. So I will be able to balance it. We'll be able to coordinate and generate team with good, you know, connection. So each player will not depend on personal skills. So when we have team that is intact, that have been together, and that will help us more. And that will create that determination to deliver always. Instead of bringing people, players from France, from England, from uh, Italy, from everywhere, and put them together suddenly. So, you know, the gap will always be there. So we must learn to bring, to generate our kind of football pattern from home by utilizing our local players mixed with the foreign players as well. I hope we will get it right next time. I will be the champion. Our chairman has committed on sports. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, once again. I want to join my voice with yours to also congratulate our players they tried their best, but unfortunately, the crowd intimidated them. Um, like rightly observed, sir, they are not coming home empty-handed. But in order for us to be more prepared, I want to say, sir, that we need our stadia to be in place. In Lagos State, for example, now, bringing out these talents you are talking about is difficult because we don't have a single stadium where we can play international match. The nearest to that is our Teslim Stadium. 
Yes, the government is doing a lot now to put it in shape, but it still lacks scoreboard, floodlights, and they feel that grassy. So that means that we can't hold any international match. Before our players left the shores of Nigeria, they were practicing and playing few international matches outside of this place. And we all know Lagos is the place where it happens. All, uh, most of the old stars, most of them were picked from Lagos. Talk of Okocha, talk of um, Kanu. Most of them were playing Lagos, most of them were picked from here. But right now, we have a challenge. Most of these good boys, to up, uh, I mean, we are the operate from here. I mean, I'm talking of the local players. It is not, um, we, we are lacking a lot of things. And those infrastructures are very necessary. So I'm appealing to the government to do a little bit more to ensure that we have stadiums that can, I mean, we are our people, our children, can practice, can train, so that we can get the best out of our system. I want to add to that, sir. The um, just concluded Asset Bank Lagos City Marathon. That marathon today is one of the best in Africa and in the world. We are gold rated and we are believing by God's grace by next edition next year we will have uh, um, attained the platinum level in the world. The reason is because it has been observed and approved that our, the people that compete here can stand their ground anywhere in the world. For example, I was there last Saturday, and I, I, I was happy to realize that when these athletes finish, we carry out a doping test on them immediately. So it means that any athlete that breaks the record in Nigeria will break the same record all over the world. And that is why I'm appealing to our government to going to encourage us, going to encourage these people, and um, this sport will not die here. Lagos State is going places. We are number one now, and we remain number one. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Joseph. Thank you, the right Honorable Speaker. As you rightly said, and the chairman as committee on sports, we give glory to God, at least for our boys. They came home with silver. Like what you have said, we need to develop our sports very well. This is an avenue that is going to employ lots of our boys. Most of our youths will be gainfully employed. And apart from that, we want us to look at some of the things that took place like a uh, South African uh, team. Majority of them are home-based players. So and it allows them to know themselves very well. It develops their sports. And look at the winning team, Ivory Cote d'Ivoire. Their coach is from that country too. And this allows him to know much more about them. And this is what we need to do. We know then that we used to have Central stores, Julius Vegas, Abiola Babes, we need to go back to our origin. So we need to develop more on our sports. We need to invest more on our sports. You know, most of all these boys that we're having in the streets, lots of them had many things to contribute to the sports. And if we come back to what you always tell us, Mr. Right Honorable Speaker, that we must invest more in sports. Most of the, our local government, instead of erecting shops all over, let's have, a, like a, the chairman said, a stadium, or probably have a better place that these children, these youth, will be able to display the wealth of experience that they are having. So I'm encouraging the government that they should invest more, and I'm encouraging, I'm encouraging the government to that, whosoever that is going to be the coach, or some of these players, not, I'm not saying we should not use professionals, but always let's put our people into consideration first. Thank you, sir. Honorable Swani. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. Um, gold would have been the best. But the silver is somewhat something worth celebra celebrating. So we congratulate our boys for fighting gallantly. Um, 
Only if our coach knew, he should have, he should have introduced Moses Simon in the first half instead of Chukwese. Only if our coach knew, he should have replaced it would be early enough. It could have been a, be a better result. Only if our coach knew, he should have introduced local players into our team for necessary blend and for progressive succession plan. However, we must continue to congratulate and give them a rousing welcome at least for getting silver for us. It's something worth celebrating. Mr. Speaker, I thank you very much. Please, Lagosian Nigerians, let's celebrate these boys. They can do better next time. Thank you. Honorable Edgar. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, right, Honorable Speaker, distinguished colleagues. Um, I think, Mr. Speaker, I think I'll be coming from a different angle at this time. Um, we need to give credit to, our, to the keeper, Uwabali, which Nigerians now call Okawabale. The personal skills at which the players, they played on personal skills, not teamwork. If you notice that when we catch this, when we catch them young, in the days of the principal clubs that were being played around Lagos, they pick players around Lagos for them to compete at, a, at every point. But for our team, they went with their personal skills to display what they know how to do best, and they, they never played as a teamwork. Also, Mr. Speaker, Nigeria team needs to buckle up for a better time to lift up a better gold or good medal. And I also noticed that uh, the players play out of fear because of the spectators. Nigerians there that went to the event were very few, and there was no how they could play to, for their confidence, to build in their confidence. And I urge that the Lagos State Government and Nigeria at large put in more efforts in sports. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon once again, sir, and distinguished uh, honorable members, sir. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Speaker. Well, the guys have done their best. They show showcase that they are a, a world class. They are a factor to be reckoned with. Uh, Nigeria has been doing very well before now. This person is not a recession as far as I'm concerned. We are a team to beat in every competition. And for the team to go far like this, it shows that Nigeria is well embedded with uh, experienced, talented uh, footballers. This case was celebrated, sir, because nobody gave them chance that they are going to go to this level they attained yesterday. And to that, we need to celebrate them. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, if you look around the world, the expectation of football in Africa is more better than ever before. This competition has shown really that African football at large is where to be reckoned with. To this, I want to say it and I thank you for giving every one of us the opportunity to celebrate with the team. I say thank you, sir, and congratulations to Nigerians. Thank you, sir. Lastly, Honorable Godiba. Speaker, sir, I also want to join my colleagues in congratulating our football team. I am seriously joining them to appreciate their sportsmanship. Yes, I agree it's not easy to win in other people's land, but they were there to showcase talents and to show what we Nigerians are. We are very, very proud of them. And Mr. Speaker, sir, it's also a unifying factor that we also saw in the country for the first time, despite all the noises in the radios and the media. 
about the situation in the country. You see again that Nigerians are united. And that shows we have a platform that if we all harness our resources together, that we can utilize. So I'm using this medium, Mr. Speaker, to encourage our leaders, those involved in sport activities, not to forego that. Secondly, and more importantly, I must also encourage our football teams, especially the football players, that we are very proud of them. We all saw what happened yesterday night. We were all there and we are watching them, despite the fact that it was in a very conducive environment, they should show that they are true Nigerians. I want to seize, seize the opportunity, too, that we should encourage the current tempo I have witnessed called in Lagos, as we are in our state here. If you go down now in Lagos, you will see a new situation in our state here, like what we used to have before. Our youths are now being driven to go and have activities in our stadiums. That should be encouraged. So when I hear people outside talk to us that, why are we passing so much money? Why are we spending so much on sporting activities? And they will see now that it is a uniting factor and it should be encouraged. So that all this issue of drugs and where they use their talents, not positively, can be addressed through sports. Once again, I want to thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much. And I think um, Honorable Ajayi made mention of something concerning this uh, same tournament. Firstly, the organization, the facilities, you know, are commendable. But um, at least the, what is it called? The fee was kind of large, you know, very special, very, even the uh, electronics, you know, the way everything pumped up immediately and all that. And the efficiency of the officials, the referee, the linesman, all of them, I, we, I think we did well. That was a commendable one. Yeah, the Côte d'Ivoire has done and they have laid a very strong foundation for the next country that will be hosting this tournament because you can't do less than what we have seen except to build more on it and it's also showed us that uh, we don't have uh, underdog again in africa all the teams did well the whole country did well look at cape Fan, a nation that we've not heard about when it comes to football the way they play the tournament, the kind of football they play, the skis, you know, the fluid moving from the back, and all of them, so many countries like that. I think African football is growing, if not grown already. But I think we can continue to do more. And that is an additional reminder for us in Nigeria that we have to do more. We have to build our team right from home up to the top. So we have the blend of local players and the foreign players all together so they can develop confidence and it seems playing all together. So, Mr. Clark, we do a letter to Minister of Sports, you know, through him to the, um, what is it called? NFA, or what do you call them? Yeah, so NFA. So, through him to them, commending him and the team for job well done. So, when they perform woefully, so if you want to condemn them, so it will not be difficult for us to do. So let us appreciate the good job they have done now. So kindly do letter commending their efforts and sources in Côte d'Ivoire. Yeah, last one from me, and I think Honorable, what is it called? Aro has a um, major interest in this, which I believe, as I earlier mentioned, that it has to do with all of us, our state, our nation, and that has to do with the issue of crime, you know, that has been happening back to back in the last two, three weeks, you know, right from Kwara to AKT to Lagos to, uh, is it play two or just to Abuja, everywhere, even up to last, this very weekend, that we heard about a boss 
you know, a commercial bus being hijacked and the old passengers were taken away. I think this is total disaster. And this is something that we have talked about in this house repeatedly. I'm sure there's, and I, I strongly believe there has never been a time or a session or assembly that we did not mention the issue of security, you know, and uh, calling on the center that it is high time that we have state's police. So this is a serious issue, it's a serious matter. It's more giving concern every time because there's no one that is safe. There's no one that is safe. I'm sure we say, God forbid. How long is God, is God going to forbid? We know we are under the protection of God, but we must do what is right as well. And from all this, it's very clear that the central police we have cannot manage this situation. It cannot manage this situation. The police we have now cannot be everywhere. I think the system has been overstretched without enough equipment and the welfare of the officers has been reported to be inadequate. So I think we just have to listen, we have to continue to call on the center. But this time around, I think the National Assembly should be our target and focus. And I've said it before, I don't know why they have to wait till almost end of the tenure before they start constitutional amendments from all the assemblies that has done amendments, it has always been at the twilight of the eternal. And it will become a hush hush thing, exercise, which most times they have not been able to see it through in such a way that the, the, the outcome of it will be acceptable to everybody. Now, this, is the, this I am, administration is a beginning of this, um, of its four years, and we, have, we are just seven months into it. So I think if the National Assembly should start the amendments now, and we should all participate and ensure that the issue of state police is put to rest forever. I do not see I'm in gratis states to have their own police, you know, um, uh, police uh, uh, personnel. The fear has always been the governor will use it to wish on. So what have we not seen, even as we have police under the federal government? It has always been the same complaint. If you put a perfect structure in place, there is always you know, means to check whosoever. So we must not, because of fear, of wish hunting and hijacking the system by a single person to expose the rest of the population to threats. Not only threats, at times, death. So, my brothers and sisters, I think this is something that is very important that we must all contribute and say something about and ensure we can, if we have to come back every other day to talk about this and direct our resolve to the National Assembly, the Senate, and the House of Reps on to define a you know, solution to this problem. I think we should not be tired. So this note, I will allow Honorable Arowu, his constituency has just suffered the same fate. Um, Honorable Arowu. Right, Honorable Speaker, uh, truly, uh, you are a leader to reckon with. Uh, thank you uh, for this word of wisdom. Uh, distinguished Honorable Member, good afternoon. Mr. Speaker, I also want to lend my voice uh, to York this afternoon with heavy heart. Uh, because what happened at the last weekend uh, in Ijede, Igbogoba Eku, in the Kurudu Constituency 2, uh, is a touching story. Uh, but I love the way you've generalized and summarized it, that it's not just happening in my constituents alone. It has been happening in every part of the country. 
but they want uh, that happen uh, in Igbogoba Eku in the LCD uh, that I also want us to look uh, critically before it spreads uh, to other to any of our local government. Uh, this is then first occur in December 6th, uh, 2023, uh, when a family was kidnapped. Uh, but the kidnapper got away with the husband and the wife, uh, leave the children stranded in the car. But after a week, uh, uh, the kidnapper asked for ransom, and this family regained their freedom, thinking that, that is all. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, uh, last week again, uh, that is February 6th, uh, in Igbe Oloja, in Igbogobayiku, also that share boundary with the other city. Uh, this kidnapper also came into the community again, uh, kidnapped few people. But we have our vigilant, our vigilante and the JTF that have been the security, the community guide try to also rescue these people from them. And six of them were shot. Uh, two people lost their life, and four others still in the hospital. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, this is so pathetic and so jammy uh, that we also need to uh, look uh, with a serious mind and heart. Rightly, as you have said, sir, I want to, you, with your kind permission, uh, to be able to say a few prayers that can also make us be able to not to for this type of occurrence not to happen again uh, with your kind permission mr speaker uh one uh, i want uh, the establishment of a committee to investigate uh, the matter and proper action for a solution mr speaker why did i say this our local vigilante the jtf the neighborhood most especially the neighborhood. Look at the name, neighborhood. They know everybody in that area. Mr. Speaker, this kidnapping will not could have happened if we don't have people that really understand that terrain. So it really shows that we have people within us that have been monitoring people, that our neighborhood can easily give our, force, our police force, the army, the information needed to guide them to really get this perpetrator. Mr. Speaker, uh, the second one, uh, the engagement of the Ministry of Environment to clear the bush, eliminating hiding spots and escape routes for criminals. Mr. Speaker, why this kidnapping uh, was so successful? Because some few of us will be curious that in Lagos, kidnapping is that how, how will this happen? Mr. Speaker, we have over 300, 300 kilometers, or let me just say meter of this bush that surrounded this place that gave access to the kidnapper to be able to escape with these people. And if the Minister of Environment can easily come to our head and clear up this bush so they, so they will not have any eye doubt on this, uh, on this road again. Um, uh, thirdly, sir, the development of security agency to enhance surveillance and patrol in that area. This could have happened last year when the first one occurred at least we should have, be able to have a patrol, that we're patrolling this area to enhance more security. And Mr. Speaker, the fourth one, the Lagos states need to also empower our neighborhood, our DTF, and our vigilante. Because they can, let's assume these people are well equipped. They could have get these people arrested. Because they know the terrain. They can, they can really surround them up. But they have no equipment to be able to go after them. So I will, I will make passionate appeal uh, to the Lagos State Commissioner of Police to please work in tendant with our local vigilante, with our neighborhood, with our JTF, to make this security architecture in the Korean Constitution and in Lagos State as a whole a reality. Lastly, sir, Mr. Speaker, the Bola Amend Igbogbo Road has been in section since 2016. Mr. Speaker, as we speak, this road is, is yet to get to maybe 40% completion. And that is only what has made it narrow, even for the security to get there in time. We call them over two hours, these people have left before, before getting to this venue. And it's just because of this road. So I want to make passionate appeal 
to the state government, most especially to the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, to please help us reimburse ITEC to continue this project. So this road will be more smoother for any of, this, uh, any of the police force or any, any, any of the security architecture to also come to our aid anytime we call upon them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, for bringing this to the floor and for giving me this golden opportunity to speak about it. God bless you, sir. Honorable, good evening. Once again, I want to appreciate you, Mr. Speaker. You've always been on top of situations. And that's one of the major reasons why we will continue to appreciate you. We cannot appreciate you enough. There is insecurity, there is problem in the land. And we are aware that it will take more than us discussion alone to bring about a tenable solution to the issues on ground. We must urgently call for a special meeting, especially between the stakeholders. Mr. Speaker, sir, I can assure you that with the way we are going, even at our level, my house was attacked this weekend, and it took so many efforts to bring the perpetrators to book. There's a lot of problems on ground as far as security is concerned. And if you watch out all the media houses, the radio stations, you would discover that it's almost in all local governments. And everybody is having issues, one or the other, on the issue of security. Especially kidnapping. Before we were talking about the Fulanese. We were talking about the northern aspect of the country. Now we are in Korodu. And from Korodu, we are also moving down to other areas. And it's showing us a signal that we must wake up from our slumber. Lagos has been the heaven, we've always been saying, of business hub, and that nothing touches Lagos. But with the way we are going, Mr. Speaker, if something urgent, as you've been also clamoring, is not done by those that are involved in these in, uh, security agencies, I hope we will not get a situation whereby we will have regrets. Finally, Mr. Speaker, sir. We need to also go back and understand what is happening in Nondo State. I'm at their own level, they are trying. And we cannot push that away. So if we have security agency here and we are not empowering them and we are not giving them the necessary tools to operate, don't let us only rely on the federal government agencies, policing, because of recent we find out that our own security internally must be enforced. So what this house has done in Neighborhood Watch, we must progress to make sure it is effective. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Honorable Adjomale, off your light, please. All right. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, I want to appreciate you for always being on top of um, matters that concerns Lagos State and its residents and its citizens. First of all, Mr. Speaker, I would toe your line in saying that I think at this point, um, the National Assembly really needs to take a look at state policing. And I say this because you, Mr. Speaker, established what we now have today as the LNSC in Lagos State. And they are super effective, however, limited by jurisdiction and powers. Um, right, Honorable Speaker, if we have what we call state policing and we have these LNSC um, men who are working presently fully armed, fully equipped, and fully trained for the job of proper policing, I believe that we will have um, a better security outfit within the state. It is on this note I want to extend my condolences to um, my Honorable Brother, Honorable Aroma Shoot, and to the lives of those who um, were lost recently in the recent attack, that may God Almighty preserve their souls and grant them rest. Um, Mr. Speaker, sir, state policing becomes necessary because um, to a very large extent, it means that what we will have is people who are familiar with the terrain of the state. Each community has people employed by that community, understanding the terrain, knowing the in and out of that particular area, familiar with everybody there. So when there are new faces, 
they will immediately begin to suspect and they know exactly who belongs where and who doesn't belong where, they, where, where um, they're not meant to be. Also, sir, you made mention that um, there's this fear that maybe the state governors will be using uh, the state police to their own beck and call. I believe that if the National Assembly decides they want to establish, they will amend the Constitution to the extent that even State House of Assemblies will have the power to checkmate all of these um, employees under state policing, and also to the extent of probably establishing a commission that will also regulate the activities of these members of the state policing. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. Honorable Rector. Thank you very much. Right, Honorable Speaker, sir. Once again, I thank you for this privilege to talk on this very important issue. Mr. Speaker, sir, they're just coming from a committee meeting of the Committee on Local Government and Committee Affairs, and um, it was shocking when the chairman of Igbogbo Local Council Development Area gave us the narration of what happened in the Korodu, and it was in disbelief that we are all just looking at ourselves. It shows that the issue of state police is more than overdue, sir. The victims in that attack was reduced because of the local um, arrangement they had on security in that community. And that is why I want to throw the line of Honorable um, Jumale in appealing that we need to, uh, I mean, empower the, uh, our neighborhood watchers, give them more power to be able to police our communities. Also, sir, the local government chairmen are supposedly supposed to be the chief security officer of their local government. And that means they are supposed to know everybody. So if we have this grassroots state policing and we, we work with them, I think we, we, we should be able to arrest all the situations. The truth is, there's a such light on all of us. Nobody is safe again in Lagos. That's what I've realized. Sir, I want to tell a small story that I, small experience I had this last weekend. A friend in somewhere in Diary here has a housewife living with them. Unknowingly to them, this housewife is being cajoled when she goes out and being monitored by some people in the Kurudu. And she has sent all the pictures of the, all, everybody living in that house. She wanted to leave. They were just suspicious of the way I, and said, we want to know where you are going. And I was there. I started looking at it. Where are you going? We are going to somebody. Who is the person? You just know the name of the person. But they have been communicating on, 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 on the phone. By the time I sat down with them, I told one or two things. I said, look, hand over this link to the police. Let the police know that person. At last, uh, to call the long story short, yesterday, the guy was arrested in the Kurodu. He has no business. He has no job. He's just going around getting information about people. Who knows what he wants to do with those informations? Maybe they are arranging kidnappers to go and kidnap the people. And that's what I said. Nobody is safe. The issue of state policing is not overdue. And I think, sir, there is need for the critical stakeholders meeting. When I say critical stakeholders, I'm talking of ourselves, local government chairman, and some of uh, and the state security officials to so look at what exactly are we going to do to arrest the This issue of state policing is not going to do, sir. I rest my case. Thank you, sir. Honorable Kasum. Honorable Kureka, I put off your line. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to sincerely thank you for always being a visionary leader. I can remember that at the advent of this uh, 10th Assembly, the first thing on your mind and the first few words that you spoke about was state policing, which cannot be overemphasized. It is something that is necessary uh, for this nation to move forward in terms of security. And just like you mentioned, sir, the National Assembly, if truly the National Assembly has the national interest at heart, uh, this is the time to move swiftly over uh, these issues. This matter, however, is needed, uh, the needed scrutiny is, is the way to go concerning uh, our security affairs. Constitutional amendment is something that should be looked in, into at this point in time and not till later, just like you mentioned, sir. Neighborhood Watch, Neighborhood Safety Corp Watch uh, is working in Lagos State. And this is one of your creations. And um, 
It has worked effectively. It is a system that has been working in Lagos State. And for the nation to suffice and, uh, and survive in terms of security, we need a system that truly, truly works at cost board. I want to believe that with a working system, it will make things better for the citizenry at large. And finally, sir, as a matter of fact, the decentralization of so many things will make things better in, in the nation at large. If you look at just the way uh, the president is already working on uh, in terms of electricity and uh, making sure that all the states are responsible for, the, for, for their own uh, electricity generation, it can also work with, with security. And definitely with that, there will be a renewed hope for Nigeria. Because at the end of the day, uh, the security challenges that we have are very, very local challenges that can be taken care of by those who will put our, uh, the lives and property in their hands, which is the chief security officer of this state. I believe in a nutshell that if all of this is put into consideration, it will be a better place for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have to commend you again on this issue of um, state police. And I pray to God we're going to get it through one day. But I want to say this to every one of us here. Our state governors in Nigeria, are they really serious about this kidnapping? I don't say it in the sense that more, some of these kidnappers that have been jailed, they are still in jail. Why have they not been executed? Let's send signal to the public. Evans in Lagos State is still in jail. When they know that, I mean, they will put them in jail, and at the end of the day, one government will come and pardon them, this thing will still continue. Number two, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, the ransom is being paid to account. But what can't we change these accounts? The banks are there. Before you can open an account, you have to have a guarantee. I mean, um, somebody to guarantee you. You have NIN, you have the BVN. So what are we talking if we are serious about this? There are supposed to be measures put in place on this. Let's have drastic action on this, Mr. Speaker. Finally, sir, this House of Assembly too in Lagos State, we're talking about Ibogbo. Let us come up with a law Anywhere you have a kidnapper, let us scrap that village. It will send signal to everyone. And we will continue coming back here talking about kidnappers because we are being surrounded by kidnappers in Lagos State. Our friends are kidnappers. Yes, yes. I mean, when I say our friends are kidnappers, the next person to you, you don't know if it's an informant. They act on information. Mr. Speaker, sir, please. Like he said, the House of um, our Ministry of Environment should try to clear the bush in that Ibobo area. Abandoned buildings too. We must work on that because they have brought the people kidnapped in abandoned buildings. Let us find a solution to that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Honourable, can you do the Put up your light, honourable. Thank you, the right honourable speaker, and I want to join others to commend you. Because at the last uh, assembly, he said a lot of things in respect of security. It's just a pathetic thing to us in the state. It started from Festac, then to Lekki, then to uh, Badagri, Magodo, Alimosho, Naibobo. We had a joint committee meeting this morning. And the report was so scary of what is happening presently, most especially in that axis. And there was a time that we had an engagement with the RRS in the state that he told us that not that they don't have ammunition and weapons, but what they needed then, the bikers, that is those that are going to ride those bicycles, and the drivers that most of the vehicles over there, they don't have drivers for it. And which I think during our exercise, we were able to channel it to the proper channel. And up to now, I don't think they have done it. State police, state police, state police. And that is what we believe is going to solve this problem. 
neighborhood, they are doing their best. But sincerely speaking, those that did not have any weapons, how do you want them to face those boys? And most of the information being given to, like the information we heard at the meeting that we had this morning, the same thing applicable to those others that were killed in the kitty. They went for security meetings, and out of those people in that security meetings are kidnappers. So immediately they left that place, they were the ones that informed them that those people have promised that brings and stones to you people. They were attacked, and they were killed. And how do you want people now to come to the security meeting and be free to talk, since he knows that those people that we are sitting together with them, they are either the kidnappers or terrorists. So that is why we need this state police very well. And secondly, we need to go far beyond that of using technology, at least, to be able, this is Lagos State. When the, if people think that uh, if they create state police, it will be uh, more or less like witch hunting for the government. Is witch hunting not better than kidnapping our people, uh, than kidnapping? So it's better we let them be using it to witch hunt than allow us to be, uh, allow everybody to be kidnapped. The man was telling us that even some of those people that negotiated at the minimal rate, those people are ready to affect their organs because they said those people are, those people that are uh, they are ready to buy kidney like three or five million from them than for you to pay one million. Sir, this thing has to be done and needs to be done urgently. And lastly, sir, we have lots of friends from those people at the National Assembly. Apart from writing them, let us, every one of us, we need to engage them. Enough is enough. May God help the Lagos State and Nigeria. Thank you, my right honorable speaker, once again, for this opportunity to speak. Mr. Speaker, when we tell you that God gives you wisdom and continue to strengthen you, we are not saying it because we want to make you feel good. We are saying it because you speak truth to the truth with great, I mean, without caring whose ox is God. And Mr. Speaker, God will continue to strengthen you and give you that emboldenment to be able to continue to speak this. You are the voice of the voiceless. You are the voice of the needy, and God will continue to empower you. We are behind you in supporting you. In this vein, sir, I want to align with you completely on the fact that we will continue to speak about this issue of state police. We've been speaking about it ever since I got into the, uh, in the state assembly, um, in the 8th assembly, and yet we are still speaking about it yet in the 10th assembly. Mr. Speaker, it is a major issue. Government must be able to have the will political will, social will, welfare will, to be able to deal with certain things, especially when it comes to security. We are losing a lot of investors, both foreign and domestic, because people are scared of putting in their money where they are not sure that the country or the state will continue to survive. So to this vein, sir, I want to say that we will continue pushing, just like Honorable Kennedy Joseph has said. If possible, Mr. Speaker, the committee, the right committee here, can go and engage them at the House of Reps and Senate, if with your kind permission, if you think of um, looking into it, sir, they go and engage them. Let them know that Lagos State, Lagos State House of Assembly is particular about the security situation and challenges in the country and yet in our state. Our state is no longer as safe as it used to be. Mr. Speaker, what is our budget for the um, LSNC, Lagos State Neighborhood Corps, that we have put in, in place? This is our own little way of putting security in check. I had the opportunity of going to Cameroon about two years ago. Upon every street in Douala and Yaoundé, you will see these men wearing yellow and yellow. They don't have um, weapons on them, but you see that there is security consciousness everywhere. Lagos State should not only be like them, but even double. To this end, I ask again, sir, the number of people in Lagos State um, neighborhood core that we have employed since last year, haven't gotten their employment letters and have not started work. We should be able to have so many people in this neighborhood core so that they will be able to activate and become security conscious. Not only that, educate every citizen on how to be security conscious. When you find out your neighbor is behaving um, untowards, you, you can report it. So, sir, I want to ask that we beef up this we can do from the state. Write to Mr. Governor to say neighborhood core should not only be emboldened, should not only be 
um, finance, but also should be strengthened so that we can curb in our own little way, as far as state is concerned, this issue of um, insecurity. On this end, I also want to commiserate um, with the people of Ikorodu on this mishap, and we pray. And to every member, it can happen on every, to any constituency. So we must all do this together and strongly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Honorable for Secretary. this opportunity. Thank you very much. The right Honorable Speaker, my colleagues. First and foremost, I want to commend the, the Speaker for his foresight regarding the bill that uh, became law in, in the Eighth Assembly. That was the neighborhood watch. Things have not degenerated to this level when you saw that that there was need for us to have our own police, uh, kind of police since the federal level, at the federal level, there was no way we could employ police. And that thing has worked remarkably in Lagos. Today, despite all the challenges we have, Lagos is still the safest state in Nigeria. But we, are, we, are, we, are in, we are sitting on the plate of Confider, and we have to do something. Lagos State has only been at the forefront of, of the clamor for state police in Nigeria. And we have been on this for years. But that because of the selfish interest, the, the, the necessary changes to the constitution that was necessary have never been done. It is not that those at the, at the federal level are not aware. It is not that those at the national level are not a, national assembly are not aware of the challenges or the need for state police. The problem is that they don't have the political will, as we, we have demonstrated in Lagos. Very unfortunate. That is why some, some years ago, people have been clamoring for national conference. Because the challenge we have is beyond security. There are so many issues that are confronting us in this country that require a global assessment. And once again, I see the opportunity to, to tell them at the federal level that we need to discuss the challenges of this country. Because it's at the end of this level, but at the state level, your baby, which is the, which is the, which is the neighborhood watch that became law that we all enjoy in Lagos. The state governments have only less than 5,000 numbers for a population of 24 million people. And sometimes last year, over a year ago, they, they wanted to employ 1,000 more hands. And they, they did interview for them, examinations for them, training for them, up to today. They have not employed them. And we are having serious challenges. The states, somewhere like Kano, that set up their own neighborhood after our own, have employed, they have over, almost 7,000 members. We are still grappling with less than 5,000. I don't know the challenge. Why we, we cannot even give those ones that we have already interviewed, employed, except for the letter. And we, can, we cannot just employ them for the past one year. It's not good. Look, I please, sir, that we, we prevail on the state, on the, on the, on the executive arm, to do something about this. Because as far, with the little time I spent as the chairman of the House Committee on information, I was able to know that the neighborhood was, they are doing a lot for us. Despite the fact that they don't have arms, they are doing a lot for us in Lagos, and we need them. Since we, we cannot arm them now, let us have more hands in that regard. So I want to appreciate my colleagues. They have mentioned several other issues that are, that are relevant in this matter. Thank you. But we must make sure that the issue of employing more hands is taken very seriously. Thank you very much, sir. Honorable Suraj. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Subscar, I must commend you for bringing up this uh, important issue. Security issue has becoming a very threat in this state. And of course, I want to sympathize with my brother, Honorable Aroma Shud, and those that have been affected at the Ikurudu. May God Almighty Allah continue to protect each and every one of us. Mr. Speaker, I think this issue of security is something that we need to caution ourselves in the sense that our movement needs to be considered how we relate our information, the time we go out, the type of people that we move with need to be considered. More than the institution whereby our laws are no more effective. The uh, Honorable uh, Shabi has just said it. A criminal will be convicted and be sentenced by Angi. And at the end of the day, this set of people will be kept in the prison. After eating government food for years, Later, what we had is 
they pardon them. Like the one that just happened of recent. Uh, almost about 1,900 Boko Haram's was, was free. We should consider how the security men, the struggle they made before they were able to capture all these people. With this, it means we are not encouraging our security personnel. So we need to talk to the upper chamber, House of Rep, Senator, to make sure that our law are being implemented. And this is one of the situations. When you go to Saudi, anybody that is guilty and be sentenced for hanging, it will not last two days. If without this, we cannot move forward in terms of security. Thank you very much, sir. Honorable Adele. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Ago. Mr. Speaker, sir. Yeah. The issue of uh, state police is totally overdue. And I want to suggest, sir, among the speakerships, member of speaker commission, me committee, that you should speak with them so that both of you, all of you, can have a meeting with the Speaker of House of Representatives and the Senior President to see how they can fast track the issue, the issue of uh, state police, because it is very, very overdue. They have been speaking about this issue for over a decade now, and there's no result. If any say want to use it against any other thing, let's see. Why can't we try it first? Let's try it. Let's see how good it is, how bad it is, before we start me, 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 making a complaint. The issue at stake now is so totally terrible. Not to talk of other state, I mean, national. That is why I am suggesting, sir, Mr. Speaker, that your, your colleagues in other states should find a way of meeting the above uh, mentioned people. That's that. They were talking about this uh, security trust fund. Yes, the, truck, the, the security trust fund, they buy car, they equip, what effort have they made to the neighborhood? What assistance have they done? All this, part of this money can be utilized to equip them. It can be equally used to add more to the number of the neighborhood rushers so that whatever we are saying now will be be reduced or good, make a good impact for the security of the state. Sir, Mr. Speaker, the issue of state right now is very, very tense. And I want to say it without uh, hide any, uh, hide, hiding anything. The situation calls for a lot of concern. We need to call on the executive to do the needful at this time because the number of the people that come to this state on daily basis is so high. And most of them by the time they come, they won't go back. And they are hiding here and there. We are all sitting on the door of father that can spare any time. Thank you, sir. Well, I think we have started repeating all that have been said. But our grant was just two minutes. Go straight to the bank and give up. So one for that was the Honorable Gule. Thank you, two Right minutes. Honorable Speaker. Um, I rise to support you on your call on the National Assembly to work on um, state policing, and also um, join uh, my Honorable from Korodu as well to suggest, as they have suggested, that uh, the Ministry of Environment sweep into action quickly to clear um, overgrown bushes and um, around the um, developed areas in Korodu. Because as you know, Korodu links most, um, a lot of towns in the, south, in the rest of the Southwest. So most of these highways with overgrown bushes have, have we noticed to have turned into a den for people to just camp and, and commit all sorts of criminalities, kidnapping being just the latest. A lot, um, in the past, a lot of um, uh, rob robberies and, and, all have been, uh, robbers, and armed robbers have been, dis have been discovered to be hiding in, in some of those bushes. So, and also, I want to commiserate with the people of Ikorodu that loved, lost loved ones and especially the families of the gallant officers of the vigilante groups that fought the kidnappers. Thank you, sir. Honorable Sabur. Good afternoon, Right Honorable Speaker, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to um, lend my voice to this topic, this issue we're having. This issue, if not nipped in the bud, can escalate. 
And that is not a false statement about security. Anyone that knows about security knows that. Um, anything that's any um, crime that's been perpetrated and, and um, the person or the perpetrator is not held accountable, then you are, you are creating room for more things like that to happen. Um, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for, out of your creativity and ingenuity, to have um, created the um, Neighborhood Safety Corps. That was a um, private member bill on the floor of this house. And I know for the longest I've been in this house, you have always, you have always lend your voice to the creation of state police. And it's for reasons like this. I know that Lagos, we are over 20 million. And the number of police we have in Lagos, they are not, it's not adequate. We cannot, you know, we cannot try to sweep down that carpet. Lagos is a coastal city too. It's a coastal state. And that is a very, that's also a security threat. For a coastal state like Lagos, a lot of influx can come from other places. We also bothered um, in the West by another country, by Benin Republic. If we have criminals come to Lagos and they're not held, they're not held accountable, they can easily find their way to other places. That is why I'm lending my voice to this. I know at the last budget, um, budget we, ha we passed. Your time is up. Thank you, sir, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Akinsoya. Lastly, put out your light. Honorable Good speaker. afternoon, uh, Honorable Speaker and my colleagues. Uh, at least, uh, let's about uh, state police, I don't want to go there. Many of us have spoken very well, and Mr. Speaker, I've said a lot about it. But what I want to say is, uh, Mr. Speaker, maybe we should leave that for now and see way forward. We should start doing something, pending the time uh, the House of Senate the National Assembly will do the needful. I think we should look at our neighborhood watch now and let them have the necessary uh, thing to work with. We can start out the way they are doing at Ondo, I've already said by one of our colleague, my colleagues here, and what they are doing at Oyo. So we can put all those people in place. And the other, what uh, Honorable Desmond said, maybe the security, maybe even if there's two or three things in this street, if they call the even ordinary whistle, if they blow, everybody will run together and they will at least gather in a place and do the Job. Please, Mr. Speaker, I just want you to use your good office, talk to the governor, and let's see what we can do on that. So we can have something. So uh, it's still better than zero. Let's have something doing, sir, that these people can start work immediately. Thank you, right on the speaker. Yeah, thank you all for your contributions, and I really appreciate your concerns about these um, threats to our daily life uh, in the in the nation generally, because it's happening everywhere. There is no state in this country that is, um, is left out. So it has to do with every state. So it has to do with everybody. Even moving from one state to another has become so dangerous that um, you have to consider it twice before you decide to travel from one state to another, everywhere, in the west, in the north, in the east, everywhere. So there is nowhere that is safe. But in moving forward, you know, I have considered the idea of uh, calling on the Senate and the House of Reps to start consideration of um, constitutional amendments to unbundle the centralization of security outfits so that every state can also create uh, security outfits at its two such states according to its financial capacity, uh, capability and every other thing. So, likewise, you must look beyond that. We must also consider factors responsible for, you know, insecurities, criminalities, and also, you know, poverty is also a major concern, particularly at this time that we have, you know, challenge of um, inflation on full stops all around. So, in one way, while we are trying to combat um, this uh, challenge in security form, then we must also look at the other side, you know, bringing relief to our people so that at least if that will not be reason why one or two people 
uh, will be motivated to join uh, criminal gangs. And we have spoken about sport as well. The good days of sports to absorb youth, to take them away from, from the streets, you know, to, to change, to touch their, uh, you know, their life positively. So if they are engaged in one thing, that sport has been very, you know, has been a very effective tool, you know, to change the minds of our young one of the youths, you know, take them away from crime and every sort of uh, criminality so that they would have target. We have young ones. We have just spoken about football. We have the, uh, for, uh, boxers. We have everything. So as we have written Minister of Sport as well, that, you know, we should go back to those days where somebody mentioned we have different football clubs in Nigeria, and we have boxers, we have people playing table tennis. So we should make all this lucrative. If everybody cannot work under government ministry, and no, we don't have much companies that can absorb them, let us create sports as a way also to employ our people and reduce security challenges. Um, I will call where to do Nigerians as well. You know, we have just spoken about somebody who did well, why he was alive, how much he sponsored sports, and so many other others. And we've used to have many of them in the past. So we call on where to do Nigerians to become philanthropists of our time so they can help. They generally help. So by so doing, touching one or two people also goes a long way to address this issue. But the most important thing is that states states must be allowed to have their own security outfit. And as raised by some of us concerning labor safety call, it is very crucial. And uh, we must call on the governor that those who have been recruited but are yet to uh, be absorbed into the system, we should call on him that they should do the needful now. And as well, if somebody mentions security trust fund, well, we should look at the security loss fund and carry out amendments that a certain percentage of that fund goes directly to the neighborhood safety corps. This, because security issue is all about money. Because while we are making money, whatever they are making, we have concentrated most of it, you know, to the benefit of the Nigeria police, which we do not have total control over. We are not saying they should deny them, but something should be given to our own outfit as well to strengthen and empower them. You know, security is a very expensive thing. Um, if, we want it to, if we want to protect our people, we must not shy away from the fact of providing enough funds for whatever we have. I think all this we need to do and put together as our resolution. And at the same time, we start considering some of our revenue generating agencies as well that to earmark part of their revenue for the, well, for the uh, efficiency of neighborhood safety, safety corps. So on this note, well, Honorable Aro, the idea of clearing, you know, butchies around the Korodu to Ogunse, I don't see how it's going to materialize. I don't see the workability because you have to clear before you know it, particularly when we approach rainy season. Before you know it, it has grown again. So I think we should focus on something, you know, uh, effective and sustainable than doing partial thing. You know, uh, um, I think it was in the fifth, seventh assembly or eighth assembly where some children were kidnapped in the Korodu. Yeah, I think it was eight assembly. So at least immediately after that, such news stopped. At least something must have been done to have put hand to it then. So we should go back and see what was put in place and work with the local security officials there. So if so you have said your prayers. So I think what we should put together is to call on the Senate presidents and the Speaker of the House of Reps, you know, with a matter of urgency to commence constitutional amendment uh, with um, few to unbundling the centralization of, Niger of police, policing in Nigeria.
and I swear call on Mr. Governor, the Governor of Lagos State, to also ensure the absorption of the recruited neighborhood safety course uh, personnel and also to increase financial support for the neighborhood safety corps. The house also to, I don't think that is necessary, it is the duty of us to do carry out amendment, so we do not need to carry um, and, and rights also call on Minister for Sports to employ sport as a means of empowering youths in the country. So I think those are the prayers. If I have left one out, you know, let me know. Which other one have you suggested? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that will be our resolution on this matter. Honorable Aro, maybe I should allow you to just move it so we seek for it. So I won't take it away from you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. As rightly amended by Right Honorable Speaker, I so, I so move. move. <coughs> Who is appointed? All right, all right. Second oh, I'm not calling you. I'm sorry, sir. Honorable Lawan, I know. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I rise to second the. All in motion. favor say aye. aye. Those against, no, the ayes are with. Mr. Clark, please do the needful. Yeah, order of the day. Majority leader. Okay, personal explanations, none, reports, none. Order of the day. Right, Honorable Speaker, distinguished colleagues, order of the day. House of Assembly Bill Number 06, Honorable Adams N.B. Etiosa 1, Honorable Majid F.A. Ibejuleki 1, Honorable Kasumu A.R. Ikeja 2, Honorable Engineer David S.S. Badagri 2, Honorable Ajomale O.O. Oshodi Isolo 2, Honorable Joseph K.O. Ali Mosho 2, Honorable Adiwale T.A. Ifakojai 1, Honorable Abdul Kerim J.A. Agigi 2, Honorable Ogundipe S.O. Oshodi Isolo 1, Honorable Apata S.O. Shomulu 2, Lagos State Administration of Civil Justice Bill 2023, first reading. The second one, B. Out of Assembly Bill yeah. number 07. I know. Finish with the first one, then the second one. Okay, one by so one. So what are you Okay, I wanted to read everything. Okay, one by one. Okay. Okay, sir. It's a kind permission, Mr. Speaker, sir. May I move that Lagos State Administration of Civil Justice Bill 2023 be read for the first time? I so move, sir. Honorable to Daniel Soran. I rise to second the motion as moved. All in favor say aye. aye. Those against, no, the eyes are with Mr. Clark. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, sir. It is a great honor and privilege to read for the first time the Lagos State Administration of Civil Justice Bill 2023. I so read. Um, majority Leader. Right Honorable Speaker, distinguished colleagues, House of Assembly Bill number 07. Honorable Adams N.B. Etiosa 1, Honorable Majid F.A. Ibejuleki 1, Honorable Kasumu A.R. Ikeja 2, Honorable Engineer David S.S. Badagri 2, Honorable Said W.O. Koshofe 2, Honorable Olumo S.L. Ajiromi Ifeludu 1, Honorable Tobun M.A. Ekpe 1, Honorable Akisonya A.N. Mushi 1, Honorable Elliot D.O. Suleri 1, Honorable Afini O.S. Lagos Island 2, Honorable Mrs. Osafile F.S. Amuo Odofi 1, Lagos State World Wealth Fund Bill 2023. With your permission, Mr. Speaker, sir, may I move that Lagos State World Fund Bill 2023 be read for the first time? I so move, sir. Honorable Akinsoyo. Right, Honorable Speaker, I rise to second the motion as move. All in favor say aye. aye. Those against, nay, the ayes have it. Mr. Clark. Thank you again, the Right Honorable Speaker, sir. Distinguished Honorable Members, 
It is a great honor and privilege to read for the first time the Lagos State Wealth Fund Bill 2023. I so read. Majority Leader. Right Honorable Speaker, distinguished colleagues, House of Assembly Bill Number 08, Honorable Adams N.B. Etiosawan, Honorable Majid F.A. Ibejuleki 1, Honorable Kasumu A.R. Ibejuleki 2, um, Ikeja 2, Honorable Engineer David S.S. Badagri 2, Honorable Ogunkelu S.O. Ekwe 2, Honorable Kazim O.M. Mushi 2, Honorable Lawal A. Ikeja, Ikeja 1, Honorable Mrs. Shongudara M.B. Suruleri 2, Honorable Engineer Yishar G.O.R. Etiosa 2, Honorable Mrs. Lawal Olumegbo O.O. Lagos Island 1, Honorable Ajayi, O.O. Ibejuleki 2, Honorable Aro, M.A. Ikonodu 2, Lagos State Geographic, Geographic Information Service Bill 2023. With your card permission, Mr. Speaker, sir, may I move that Lagos State Geographic Information Service Bill 2023 be read for the first time? I so move, sir. Honorable Foluke. I rise to second the motion as so moved. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those against no, the ayes are weak. Mr. Clark. Thank you, sir. The Right Honorable Speaker, distinguished honorable members, it is a great pleasure to read for the first time the Lagos State Geographic Information System Bill 2023. I so read. Thank you. Lay of reports. Honorable Miranda. Good afternoon, Right Honorable Speaker. I, Honorable Miranda Mujisola Lazbel, do hereby lay the report of the Eight Man Adult Committee on the unfortunate death of Dr. Desa Viyari, female medical house officer at Lagos State General Hospital, Odon, Lagos. I so leave. Honorable Noim. Right Honorable Speaker, distinguished colleagues, report of a six-man adult committee on a petition titled Replan by Oniba of Iba to cause crisis, acrimony, and breakdown of law and order in Igbo Eleni by illegally installing Bale within the Igbo Eleni land, requests to take immediate action to kill the satanic plan and foster breakdown of law Another honorable knowing, madam. Thank you very much, sir. Honorable Yenka Kazim. Good afternoon, Right Honorable Speaker. I 
היה בא ל-report of the committee on lands on a petition titled Efficient of Magod Hojiarui Phase 2 by the Omonile in conjunction with their private developers by creating illegal access to the proposed wetland development, a call to avert security threat to lives and property in Magodo GRA Phase 2, sir. I hereby leave. Leader. Right Honorable Speaker, distinguished colleagues, I have the approval of the Right Honorable Speaker to move that this House adjourn till tomorrow, 13th of February 2024 at 10 a.m. I so move, sir. Honorable Speaker, I rise to second the motion as moved. Um, there will be There will be a meeting immediately after plenary. All in favor say aye. aye. Those against nay, their eyes have it. This house stands adjourned to Tuesday, 13 February 2024 at 10 a.m. prompt. I rise. <laughs>